Hey, it's Clara here from Art Smart TV. And when I was finishing year 10, all of my friends told me that this last summer holidays is gonna be my last chance to actually have a holiday. So towards the end of year 10, I totally relaxed and I had a great time in the summer holidays. I chilled out with friends, I partied, and I watched every TV show you can ever imagine. And then year 11 came and I was drowning. The subjects that I thought I knew had completely changed. This is an incredibly common experience across year 10 students. And in this video, Rowan and I are gonna share with you the science behind why this happens and also give you three simple things you can do to still have fun during your summer holidays and also get prepared for year 11. Let's jump in. So why does this happen? Well, there's actually two reasons. The first is that unless you absolutely have nailed year 10, you're gonna have gaps in your understanding based on mistakes and just topics you didn't get. Now, this is then gonna get exacerbated by reason number two, and that's something called summer learning loss. So in a meta study conducted by the University of Missouri, they identified that over summer, students lose up to one month of learning. Now this is unfortunately even worse for maths, where students lose up to 2.6 months of learning. Now, if school is roughly nine months of the year, excluding holidays, it means you almost lose a third of that learning for maths over the summer period, which is incredible. And so what we've got to find out then is if this is occurring, we've got to identify what are three simple things that you can do to minimize and overcome this while still, yes, having some fun. Step one, consolidate your gaps for term four. Right now, at the end of term four, everything is probably slowing down and not much is happening. You're likely getting little to no homework as well, which means you have extra time to hang out with friends and also do some revision. The first thing you need to do here is get out your maths, English, science assessments. Essentially, any subject that you're continuing into year 11 and have a look at any mistakes you have made. What you wanna do is then go over these mistakes and find any questions that are similar to make sure that you do not have these gaps in your knowledge. And now allocate one day a week for each subject. For example, maybe Monday for English, Tuesday for math, and use one hour to go over those subjects and those questions to make sure you are not missing anything for year 11. Step number two. Use your summer holidays to get familiar with the content that's coming in the next school year. So look, I get summer holidays are a time to chill out and have fun. But we've got to remember that summer learning loss happens and then on top of that you hit year 11 and it's like a train has just smashed into you. And so what we've got to think about is how we can be a little strategic in using our summer holidays to you know, limit and prevent summer learning loss and get a little ahead while at the same time having some fun. And there's a really simple way we can do this. From all of the research we've done over the last decade with high-performing students, one of the things that students constantly identified as you know, one of their major mistakes they made over years 11 and year 12 was actually in starting study notes too late and then falling behind. And that creates a sense of overwhelm, it limits exam preparation, and ultimately it has an impact on results. And so what we recommend is in the summer holidays to actually get started on some study notes for some of your subjects. And so it's really simple. You go to Nessa uh, and download the syllabus. All of the syllabuses for prelim and HTC are available. And then once you've got that, you wanna go and get a textbook for that subject. Now the great thing is in November to February, a lot of year 12 students who have just finished the HSC are selling their textbooks. So you can pick up lots of textbooks really cheap. And then what you wanna do is use these textbooks to start constructing some study notes for the first five to seven dot points in the course. Now, yes, the notes won't be perfect. You're teaching yourself. Uh, maybe you're missing things, that's okay. Of course, you're gonna be taught this in school and that'll be an opportunity to, to fix it. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna help you, first of all, not only prevent summer learning loss, but actually learn during summer. It's gonna help you get a little familiar with what's coming. And that's gonna mean that when you get into year 11, it's gonna be less overwhelming. And even if you do fall behind, which is probably inevitable, it's not gonna matter because you are already a little ahead and you've built a buffer for yourself. Now, critically, if this is maths, you're not gonna be writing study notes, but what you can start doing is doing the basic easy questions in the textbook on some of the new topics that are coming up to start helping you build a little bit of confidence and familiarity. And of course, if it's English, you can start getting the prescribed text list and actually going through and doing some of the reading over the summer holidays. So when you hit the year, 
you're already familiar with the text that you're going to be studying. So now that we've unpacked really what you need to do from a strategic study level, we've got to work out how on earth do you do this and still have some fun. So let's jump into step three. Step three, balance your fun and study by putting in a simple plan. So you're probably wondering, hey, you guys said that I'd still be able to have fun, but this seems like a lot of work. Well, the way you can balance your fun and study is by putting in a simple plan. And we recommend one of two options. The first one is to allocate one day a week in your January holidays, where you'll work on three to four of your subjects that you'll be continuing into year 11. The second plan is to work for, well, allocate one to two hours a day, Monday to Friday, to work on these subjects. In the case for the one day a week, you will still have six days of fun left. And in the case for allocating one to two hours, let's say you do nine to 11 a.m., you will still have the rest of your day and the weekend to have fun. All you need to do is pick which one works best for you. Feeling a little overwhelmed about the entire process? That's exactly where an Art of Smart Tutor can make a huge difference. We've got an incredible team of teachers and tutors who can firstly work with you to identify your gaps from year 10, to make sure that there's not any holes, and if there is, to actually identify what we've got to do to help you turn it around and feel confident. Secondly, what they can also do is start helping you get ahead, getting familiar with what's coming in year 11, limit and minimize your summer learning loss, and in fact, turn it around so that you're learning even more and you're ready to hit the ground confident for year 11 so you don't feel overwhelmed and fall behind. So get in touch with us at artofsmart.com.au to find out more. If you have any questions about this process and how to use your summer holidays effectively, let us know by leaving a question in the comments below. And finally, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because we do videos like this every single week. So we'll see you next time.